Hello and welcome to the four steps in the negotiation process. This is an add-on to the One Day Negotiation Power Program. As you would have learned in our negotiation program, there are four steps to any negotiation. The first is preparation. In the preparation phase, as we're about to learn, 80% of our success will be in our ability to understand what exactly it is we want and how to prepare for our tradables, to prepare for what we're going to ask for, what we're going to do if the other side throws us a curveball, and how to go into that discussion with all of the uh, ammunition that we need. The second step is to probe, at which point we are interested in finding out more about what the other person wants, what they're thinking, perhaps why they want it. We're not telling them too much about what we want, but rather we're interested in learning more about them. The third step is the propose phase, and this is when we then, having had their information provided to us, propose what we're thinking. In other words, are we close? Are we some way apart? And in, in this proposed phase, we go backwards and forwards and we are going to uh, bargain, perhaps trade concessions, maybe compromise a little bit in order to get what we want. And in the final step, we are going to pack up. Once we've reached an agreement, we make sure that the agreement is going to stick. So let's take some time and look at these four phases. Step number one is preparation. So in the preparation phase, the first thing to do is to set your objectives. What is it that you want to achieve? You need to know what is the main reason you're negotiating and what is the main thing that you want. For example, let's imagine you're buying a home. Well, your main objective might be to buy the home. A sub-objective might be the terms. Did you want a 30-day settlement, a 60-day settlement, or a 120-day settlement? Ultimately, you may not be able to change the settlement time, but have you been able to purchase the house? So therefore, what is your main objective? The second thing I'm going to do is identify my interests. In other words, do I have any long-term interests in coming to an agreement in this negotiation? For example, if I'm buying something and it's a one-off purchase and I'm never going to see this person ever again, then I really have no long-term interests as such. Therefore, I might use a different style of negotiation when I negotiate. For example, I'm probably go, going to go in a little bit harder. Why? I have no long-term interests. Once this is over, I'm, I'm never going to see this person ever again. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to be rude or obnoxious or I'm going to be uh, unethical, but it means I have no long-term interests. On the other hand, if I'm negotiating with a very good client, and this is a, a long-term client, then it means that my interests outweigh my position. What are the precedents for this negotiation? For example, has a similar negotiation ever been conducted before? What was the outcome? Uh, once again, let's use the example of purchasing a home. How much does a similar home in a similar area currently sell for? You see, there's no point me trying to sell my home for a million dollars, for example, if the very best home in the street has sold for 750000 Not unless there is a special reason why my home is worth $250,000 more. Likewise, if I am buying a home, I want to find out what the going rate is. Is the vendor offering a fair price? Is it market rates? If the vendor is trying to sell it for more, I want to know why. For example, um, if I have to put my price up and, and explain that to one of my clients, I need to uh, help him or her understand the precedence for doing that. For example, um, is the dollar 
going higher or lower uh, have um, the price of uh, using our trainers gone up are there other costs involved that I need to let them know about and now I want to create a series of tradables what is it I'm going to trade and concede on in order to get what I want as we would have learnt in our training there are three tradables time money and the specifications generally when one of these is more sensitive it means there is more leeway to the other two for example if a customer says to me I only have four thousand dollars to spend on training that's it and for example let's imagine my training is more than that well what do I do I could say sorry I can't uh, give you what you want well that would be short-sighted wouldn't it alternatively I could look at money uh, or pardon me I could look at time and I could look at specifications for example if money is the area where the other person is least negotiable what about time for example could I offer to do this course at a time that suits me and not a time that suits them what about if I change the specifications for example I could provide this training for a cheaper rate however I will give you half day not a full day or we'll finish at three o'clock not five o'clock or I will use another trainer to do the course it'll still be a very good course but you won't be able to have me come and do it because my fee is more than what you're wanting to spend or maybe you pay up front or maybe you give me five referrals afterwards in other words I'm thinking of all the things that I might want if I was to reduce my price to a point which made them somewhat uh, happy with the result in other words the purpose of negotiating is to get to a point where both parties feel like they've won and the way we do that is by trading concessions the next thing I have to do once I know exactly what it is I have to trade is to set my limits what is the very most I'm going to ask for what is the very least I will accept and still call this a win this is called the bargaining zone for example um, let's imagine I want to purchase a second-hand car well the most I uh, am prepared to uh, spend is ten thousand dollars I probably don't have uh, a bottom end because uh, who knows I might pick myself up a bargain but what I know is when I go and do some shopping for a used car the very most is ten thousand dollars therefore anything above that is not in my bargaining zone I now set some limits in this case let's imagine that I was uh, purchasing maybe some something uh, of around the uh, $20,000 uh, price tag for example let's say it was some uh, some some music equipment well the very most I want to sell my musical equipment for is around twenty three thousand dollars so um, that's what I want twenty two thousand nine hundred ninety dollars that's what I believe it's worth the valuation is much higher and uh, I believe I can justify that to the person I'm negotiating with however the very least I'm prepared to accept is eighteen thousand five hundred dollars anything between that range is a win anything less than eighteen thousand four hundred ninety is a lose so this is my win zone what I need to then do is create a batner what is my fallback position in other words what am I going to do if I cannot get the very minimum I'm wanting 
a BATNA is the best alternative to a negotiated agreement. And the BATNA is what I do if I can't get my lowest price. Now, what is my BATNA? Let's imagine I was selling some musical equipment. Well, uh, what are my possibilities? Could I sell it to someone else? Could I re-advertise it? Could I keep it? Could I perhaps sell it in stages? Maybe I have 10 pieces of equipment and I can sell two pieces at a time. Or maybe I sell the most expensive for uh, 12000 and then the rest for smaller amounts. So here's the thing. The BATNA is going to determine what you do. Let's imagine someone was heading overseas and had a car to sell and they were leaving next Friday. They'd never come back to the country again. Therefore, they have a very bad fallback position because they're going to leave. So what will happen if they can't sell the car? Well, do they have a friend they could sell it to or they could give it to? Do they know someone who would sell it on their behalf? If they do, then that might be their alternative. If they have no alternative, then what might happen is they might have to take a price which is lower than what they really wanted. The most important question to ask is what will you do if you can't get the minimum that you want from your negotiation? And if you have some alternatives, if indeed there are some things that you could do, then you have a strong BATNA. Too often people give away too much or give in too soon by not having a BATNA. What is the best alternative? So it's always important to know what you'll do if you can't get your minimum. Finally, before I go to negotiate, I'm going to create a series of what-if scenarios. In other words, I'm going to sit down and think about all the possibilities that could occur during the, nego the negotiation. What if they tell me that they're going to be discussing the sale of this product or the purchase of this product with my main competitor? What if they try and lowball me? What if they come back to me and want to pay over 90 days, not 7 days? In reality, you could have hundreds of what-if scenarios. However, your best judgment should tell you what is going to be pretty typical of this type of negotiation. And of course, the more negotiating that you do, the greater chance you'll have of developing these scenarios so you know what to expect. The reason I want to prepare these what-if scenarios is so that if these things do occur, and many of them might, I know how to prepare myself and I know my counter-argument. I simply draw up a piece of paper and on one side I have what if and on the other side I have what I'm going to do if they ask that question or if this argument comes up. That's the end of session one where we've spoken about preparation. When you're ready, why don't you go along to session number two and we'll talk about probing.